Hey guys, Bobby here from Wedding Cinema University and just recently Rode announced its new on-camera microphone, the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. So today I want to go over the three big changes that are coming along with this new microphone as well as some of the smaller things. So in our experience with on-camera microphones, I've used a Rode VideoMic Pro as well as a Rode Video Micro. And originally in wedding films, I wasn't really using this. Um, you know, you can get audio with the DSLR. Granted, it's not as high quality. I totally understand that and I agree. But I was all about being as small as possible. Um, I had some issues, which I'll get into later, some things that they actually are fixing with the Pro Plus. Uh, and ultimately for the first handful of years, I just chose not to run an on-camera microphone. Anything that was important, I was, you know, laving somebody up um, or I had, you know, a feed from the DJ. So I was getting toast, I was getting vows, I was getting the sermon, etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, recently we've introduced and it was actually because of vlogging, right? So we vlogged or I vlogged for a little while um, and I, I bought the Rode Video Micro and I bought the Rode Video Mic Pro. Um, not with the intention of using it on weddings and other things, but it kind of quickly won me over. Um, I'm still using labs, I'm still using DJ feeds and whatnot and church feeds, but it's a great backup and it's definitely better than what's on the camera, at least on the cameras we're using. So now comes the announcement of the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, and that is going to be replacing the Rode VideoMic Pro. Now this is a great microphone. I've done a review on this compared to the Micro. Both of them good microphones, different price points, and a few different adjustments and settings you can do with this one that you couldn't do with the other one. But there are some huge improvements coming with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. So first of all, a couple of the small ones. These aren't as big to me, but they're still worth noting. Um, first of all is the design. Um, it's getting more of what I would call like a traditional shock mount, what you would see used um, with like a shotgun mic on a boom pole or something. Uh, it looks similar to this, but it, it's a little wider. It's like a U shape. There's two of them, you know, front and back. So it is generally a, a similar structure, but it's a little bit bigger, um, at least that shock mount. Now, this is kind of important because there have been a ton of complaints about these, these little rubber bands the, you know, what actually absorbs the, the movement and the shock. Uh, a lot of people have them break and fall out. And over time, I've heard that they can kind of, um, you know, basically dry up and, and crumble to some extent. So uh, it looks like it's a, a, you know, some kind of different uh, mount. Obviously, it's a different structure. Hopefully, they do away with these as well. Um, and then another smaller thing that, you know, kind of one of those things, we don't really have any samples. I don't have a hands-on, you know, review of this, but the actual, um, you know, windscreen here is gonna be a different material. Um, so this is just like foam. Uh, the one in their announcement, it looks like foam, and I think he said microfiber. So, you know, it's not like a dead cat or anything like that, although I'm sure you'll be able to use that as well if you'd still like to, um, but it is maybe like an in-between, uh, hopefully, just means better sound or you know better wind reduction or something like that. Now on to the three big things that I think are going to make a world of difference with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus compared to the Rode VideoMic Pro. Now the first one is this cord right here. This is you know it's it's built in. Um, you can see it, it goes down here and it loops around. Um, and then you know, if you want to attach this to something else, you can buy some adapters and stuff like that. But with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, it's going to uh, plug in right here on the back and it will be, you know, a plug that plugs into whatever camera you're using, but also plugs into here, which will allow you to use different cords. So if you want to use this for filming, let's say on, um, you know, a smartphone or something like that, you could use a different cord than what it comes with in order to, you know, to adapt that to your given camera of choice. Uh, the second big thing is this battery compartment. Now this thing has probably second only to these rubber bands, has gotten a ton of complaints. Uh, it's a pain to open and it breaks and it's all just one piece, it's not even connected. So nobody really likes this thing. They are getting rid of it, well kind of. It's still a similar placement, but it is going to be attached. It's on hinges so it's not gonna fall off. And also they're switching it from a nine volt battery, which I can't seem to get out right now, to a double A format. So much more useful. We have plenty of double A's on hand, tons of rechargeable batteries and whatnot. Um, and nine volt is just, you know, it's not something we have on hand. So if this dies out on a shoot, 
we can't use it. Uh, they're also introducing at the same time kind of a nine volt looking double A also looking battery um, that is made by Rode and is rechargeable. So if you want something that's a little more proprietary, I imagine there's some advantages, probably a longer battery life or something like that, although I don't have any details um, that will be available as well. Not sure if it will come with it or not, but like I said, it does use double A as well. Now, the biggest change, the biggest upgrade for me at least, is the introduction of not having a power switch. Now, that's actually not an entirely true statement. You'll see there's a button on the top if you look at pictures. So you can power it on if you want, I imagine. But mainly it's that if you plug this into a camera that is powered on, it'll automatically sense it, I guess, is what I'm, what I'm assuming, and it will turn on. So that will save you from the dreaded scenario that happens far too often, where you plug this in, and you start rolling and you're halfway through your shoot and you realize you didn't turn this mic on. Usually this isn't a main source of audio, although for things like vlogs and stuff like that, it very well could be, and it's always a bummer to have a good take that all of a sudden doesn't have audio. On the flip side of that, it'll also solve the problem of killing your batteries super quickly, which is what happens when you leave this on. So as soon as you unplug that from a camera, it's gonna automatically shut off saving you from buying with this one nine volt batteries but with the new one tons of double a's are having to recharge constantly so those are the main changes coming to the rode video mic pro plus it is very much a replacement for the rode video mic pro which is a very solid microphone uh, a lot of the settings and stuff are staying the same you can see similar buttons on the back of the pro plus now we don't have a release date or a price point but i imagine it will be set to compete with the rode video mic pro maybe a little bit of a price bump um, for some of those added features. So that's my review of the three big changes coming to the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that was just recently announced by Rode. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, we don't have a hands-on version of this yet, but if we do ever get one or if we get more news on the price point or the release date, we'll make sure to update that in the description and maybe make an updated video as well. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, I'd love for you to subscribe below and follow along as we release more wedding cinema related videos, as well as gear reviews, travel videos, and other videos to help you grow your skill set and your business. Thanks.